OK, so how are we going to then go ahead and solve this? So if we understand that 165 degrees is approximately 0.2588, and we realize that 165 can be rewritten as sine of 210 minus 45 degrees, right? We're using the subtraction for this one. And the reason why we chose 210 and 45 degrees is because we can evaluate those angles on the unit circle, right? And if we can evaluate them on the unit circle, then we can find the values of cosine and sine. The problem would be is why can't you just do this then, Ms. McLogan? Why can't you say sine of 165 degrees is equal to the sine of 170 degrees minus 5 degrees. Well, again, it goes back to why can't we evaluate for 165? Is 170 a give us a point on the unit circle that we're aware of? No. Does 5 degrees? No. So you have to be able to choose when you're doing your addition and subtraction, we have to use angles that we can use on the unit circle. So now that we know, here's our formula, how we break it in, let me go ahead and show you what the formula that we're going to use. If you have the sine of the subtraction of two angles, sine of u minus v, automatically I can label this as my u, and that's as my v. Right? You're subtracting two angles, u minus v. Then, JJ, what I'll do next is now this is the formula. Now, please remind yourself, don't freak out. You guys are going to be provided these formulas. You're not going to have to remember the formulas. All right? They will be provided to you on your tests and everything else. All right, they're also on page 380, I believe. So this one goes sine of u times cosine of v minus cosine of u times sine of v. That is your formula. All right, so now to solve for this, what you guys are simply going to do is now let's plug in our values. Well, I said u is 210 and b equals 45. So therefore, I have the sine of 210 degrees times the cosine of v. Now, please note, guys, that's the cosine of 45 degrees, not negative 45 degrees. It's u, positive u, minus positive v. Right? It's u minus v. So you're taking the value of v, not that subtraction. Because the formula is u minus v, but you're taking the positive value of v, v. Then I subtract that by the cosine of u, so it'd be cosine of 210 degrees times the sine of 45 degrees. So before I go on any further, is everybody OK with what I have done? Does anybody have any questions? Pretty much, you guys were pretty much are going to be presented with an equation that's in that format. All right? You're not usually going to have to figure it out, but I wanted you to understand how I came across this if you do have to figure it out. You will be provided this formula. And then like in Algebra 1, all we're doing is evaluating the angles. We're plugging them in for what they represent. So is everybody OK? If you have questions, please ask now or forever hold your peace. Good? Okay. All right. So now we need to evaluate for sine of 210 degrees. So I go back to my unit circle and I say, well, what is the coordinate point at 210 degrees? That coordinate point is all the way over here, right? Michael, do you remember what that coordinate point is down there? Um, seven, five, six. Yeah, yeah, but the coordinate point. What's actually the point? Uh, Here's the points for the first quadrant, but this is in the third quadrant. Negative half and negative three. Uh, three, three and four. Close. For 210 degrees, the coordinate point is negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Notice it's a direct reflection of the origin of this point right here. So it's just directly down across. And then obviously we know that 45 degrees, that point's right here, right? Square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. All right, You really need to make sure, guys, you're not spending your time doing these problems, spending your time trying to figure out where the points are in the unit circle. We've got to get past the unit circle. All right. So here's your points. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we need to evaluate sine, cosine, and tangent for all of these. Well, remember, the sine of any angle represents the y-coordinate where that angle intersects the unit circle. And the cosine of any angle represents the x-coordinate. Right? So now all we're going to do, label our x's and our y's. And now we just plug them in. So the sine of 210 degrees is negative 1 half. 
right? The cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2 minus the cosine of 210 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2. So it's negative square root of 3 over 2 times the sine of 45 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2. Okay, We see here we have a double negative, which we now know is going to multiply to a positive. Now we need to multiply across. Negative 1 times square root of 2 is negative square root of 2 over 4. This is plus. That becomes square root of 6 over 4. Now, we can go ahead and um, combine those if we would like to. But we can also notice that they have common factors, right? What is a common factor of 6 and 2? Or it's 2 and 6. Israel, what's a common factor of 6 and 2? What both divides into 6 and 2? Two? 2, right? But now, since they're the square roots, I, can, I have to actually take out the square root 2. So if I factor out the square root 2, I also can factor out a 4 from both of these. So my final answer is going to be the square root of 2 over 4 times negative 1 plus the square root of 3 over 4. And again, I can always check my answer. I can always check my answer by applying distributive property back in. And if I multiply this all the way through, square root of 2 over 4 times negative 1 is negative square root of 2 over 4. And square root of 2 over 4 times square root of 3 over 4 is square root of 6 over 4. Okay, And that will be my final answer. Yes? I'm just kind of confused about how you went from square root of 6 over 4 to negative 1 plus square root of 3 over 4. If I said factor that out, what do you do? Um, I take that square root of hmm. I'm doing the exact same method, okay. except it, I know it's just a little bit different because now we have these radicals and the fractions, right? But the process that I'm doing is the exact same thing. Does that kind of help? Because what I'm doing is I'm saying, what do these, what does square root of 6 and square root of 2 have in common? Square root of 2. So I factor that out, right? What do 4 and 4 have in common? A 4. So I factor that out. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a mistake. That should be over 1. Sorry. I can see where you made your mistake. Or at least I made a mistake. That's square root of 3. Sorry. Because square root of 2 over 4 multiplied by square root of 3 gives you square root of 6 over 4. Sorry about that. I did make a mistake. OK? Cool? That was it? Done. Fine. Um, I want to go over tangent for you guys because.